Best piece of advice. Hmm. How you gonna start me off like that? Advice. So probably for my uncle Jared, shout out to him. He also takes most of my photos. Um, but he just told me never be too stuck to one idea. Um, and as somebody who has a thousand ideas, that's something I needed to hear. And so ever since then, it's been a little bit easier, like processing all the ideas and being able to decide, like, is this really important or do I just want to stick to it because it's mine, you know? Um, so that's been good, you know. I always need something to kind of like separate the best ideas from all of them, you know, because like you have the good, you have the bad, and you have the really good. I think as myself, as an artist, I don't really um, conform myself to a genre. Um, my good friend Drea Smith, she considers herself a non-genre conforming artist. Um, and although I, I'm not gonna steal her wave, I definitely feel her on that tip. Um, and I just, I feel like genres are cool, like they're important, but at the same time, it's like they don't really cover every base. You know, and I feel like when you make music and you make art, it's kind of a, a reflection of who you are. Like if you're making it yourself and you're not just singing somebody else's words, it's kind of a reflection of who you are. And so it's kind of like putting yourself into a genre, you know, putting yourself into a group of other people. You can identify with something like I kind of identify with alternative music, I identify with r and I identify with hip hop. I grew up on hip hop and rap, like I identify with all of that. but. There's not really a genre that is going to tangle all of those together, like how I am and how I've been inspired by it. Um, so I feel like I don't really, I'm, I'm kind of like Drea, like I don't really conform to a certain genre. I, I call it uh, otherly, <laughs> you know, just being on otherly shit. So. You know, I was telling Glow that as an artist, I kind of decided that you know, I have to have my heart together and I have to have my mind together before I move forward, you know, on my path. And I think that that's important. A lot of people, they go into our industry, they go into fame, they go into popularity and they don't really have their like, they don't know who they are, you know. And so it's easy to get lost in a lot of stuff. It's easy to like let people tell you who you are, it's easy to let people make decisions for you. When you go into a room and you know who you are and you're confident in that and you also know like what you believe in and what makes you happy and what is drawn to your spirit, then I feel like you have, it's easier to put a foot forward no matter where you're going. Um, so I think that's always important. I think that in our communities, especially in the music community, it's just important that every artist and every person, period, just kind of like knows what they need, you know, to be happy. Because happiness is not a luxury, you know? it's, it's something that you need. As a creative, you have the platform to be a healer. Um, I think that it's always important how you want to use your platform. Some people can use their platform to heal. Some people can use their platform to kind of just like promote themselves. Um, but I think that once, if we are healing ourselves and we also healing ourselves through our art, people that tune into our art are gonna feel whatever we were feeling when we made that. So if I'm putting my self-healing into my art, then anybody that receives my art is gonna receive some type of self-healing just because they'll be able to relate. As human beings, we can always relate to each other in places of struggle or pain or healing. So um, I think that creatives have the choice to be healers. I think that they have that choice um, and it's just up for them to make that choice. Everywhere I go, they look and stand, stop and talk about what they do.